that's a lifestyle. I go hard for God daily, cause I'm God's child. I got a purpose that I'm doing on purpose. Firm foundation, ten toes, meet the surface. Something always happened when I bless this name. But faith got me standing tall like great Danes. Holy Spirit's in the room. Holy Spirit's in the room. We don't have to light a candle. We don't have to light a candle. Go ahead and let your light shine. Go ahead and let your light shine. And treat the word as a handle. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Get Inspired. My name is Kirby Love, CEO and founder of Go Hard for God Daily. And I am, um, I guess I like to say your host. I am your spokesman. <laughs> um, welcome back, man, to another episode. As you guys have been following along, you know that we've been talking about in this season, in season six, we've been dealing with spiritual warfare. So the first part of this season, what I've done is broke it down into a series and a series that we're in right now. It's called enemy tactics or goals of Satan, right? And what I do is um, through, throughout this series in the spiritual warfare season, um, I'm just going to be talking about different things that the enemy tries to do, things that the enemy try to attack, things that we need to be uh, mindful and watchful of so that we, as we're growing the kingdom of us, as we talked about this in the uh, first episode of, of this season, um, we talked about building the kingdom you because the kingdom you is what becomes a threat to the kingdom of darkness. All right. So in that first episode, the first enemy tactic that we went through or the goal of Satan that we went through was to separate you from God. In this episode, as we continue to progress through this season, this episode will be uh, enemy tactic number two or goal of Satan number two. Uh, I'm kind of tuggling with these names uh, for, for title purposes, but the second enemy tactic that we're going to get into today is marriage and families. All right. Uh, before I get into everything I'm going to be talking about, uh, again, I just want to say thank you guys so much for supporting the Go Hard For God Daily uh, movement, everything that you guys have done thus far, liking videos, sharing videos um, on our TikTok family, Instagram, Facebook, those who go to the website, purchase merch, man, we appreciate you guys so much. You are part of the reason why we're able to continue to do what we're doing right here. So thank you so much for your support. Continue to go and uh, buy some merch, some T-shirts or whatever it is, because that helps us to be able to continue to push out things like this and get this in front of people just like you. Um, if you have not done so already, please go to our YouTube page, subscribe to our YouTube. It's Go Hard For God Daily uh, on YouTube. Everywhere, if you just search Go Hard For God Daily, we're going to come up, GHFGD. We're going to be somewhere, all right? Uh, just subscribe to all the pages, man, the channels, the the podcast, um, follow the, the podcast, like it, share it, comment on it, leave us a review. Again, all of these things help us, you guys. So I really, really need you to continue to partner with us and being able to reach more people just like you. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and dive into marriage and families. All right. One of the another enemy tactic. Another thing that the enemy tries to attack that he wants to destroy is your marriage and or your family. All right. I know there may be some listeners here who may, who may not be married, but you may have children um, or you may just have brothers and sisters, you know, from your mo mother or father. All of it still ties into family because there are people right now who are not talking to their blood brothers and blood sisters because they are in all, or they're up against one another. But the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? So that means that what we're dealing with, what we're seeing sometimes when we're at all or when we're against one another, it's, all, it's not always just I'm mad at my brother or I'm mad at my sister, all right? There's a bigger thing that's going on, and we really have to address this and deal with this issue because if... We get separated from family. If we get separated from family, then the first thing we do is start solely relying on ourselves and feeling like, well, we don't need, I don't need them anyway. And that's not God's desire. God's desire was never for us to be alone. In the beginning, He said it is not good for man to be alone. And He brought someone with man, all right? And that being Adam and Eve. But all of this still ties into family. All right. So one of the things that Satan likes to do is attack that. And we have to be mindful to some of the, the tricks and the tactics that he uses to try to attack our family and try to bring us uh, apart from one another, whether it be marriage, husband, wife, whether it be father, son, whether it be mother, daughter, mother, son, however you want to look at that. 
it's it's a plan to be attacked. All right. That's an enemy tactic. He wants to attack it. And you have to be responsible for protecting your family. You have to be responsible for that. Now, husbands, and when we talk about marriage, um, it's a it's a dualistic thing, but husbands, you are the head of the house, all right? You are the covering, all right? Now we know it's Christ above you. But in this sense, you have to be in a place where you're standing on business spiritually. Stand on business spiritually. All right. I know that's something that we've been using lately, but you have to be 10 toes down, strong in prayer, covering your family, covering your children, covering yourself and just constantly seeking God and being before God to help lead you as you lead your family. All right. And that means you're staying away from all the things that does not glorify God, the things that does not bring increase to your family, things that's not um, equip and build up your children and things like that. All of this stuff we have to be responsible for as men. Now, there's a lot of weight on men. And one of the things that we're also dealing with as we talk about families, as we talk about marriages, one of the things that we're dealing with is the reversal roles of husbands and wives of men and women. All right. There's a lot of women right now who are trying to be men, who are trying to take on the role of a man who wants to be a man. And that is not God's will. All right. These things are playing out right in front of our face. All right. Protect your your house protect your house all right and there are men who are acting like women as well all right so we have to be 10 toes down as men and women you need to be 10 toes down as women we have to know our role we have to know our assignment we have to know how this thing and what order looks like god is a god of order so one of the things that the enemy is after when he talk when i talk about coming after your family is the, is breaking the order that that is set or that's supposed to be set for your home if he can break the order once order is broken then guess what there's no structure there's no structure the enemy is all about chaos God is all about order. God is all about structure. God is all about foundation, things being built and put in the right place. And, you know, that's how things function properly. But the enemy is, is the complete opposite. He don't care about foundations being built correctly. He don't care about order and structure. He just wants to do things and cause complete, cause complete chaos in your home. All right. So I want to dive into some scriptures here. Um, as we go into destroying marriages and family, one of the enemy tactics. So in Ephesians 4 and 26, it says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. All right. So here's one thing that we see in this particular passage of scripture is that there is room for anger. There is room for anger. This means that God understands that we're going to have times where maybe our emotions or whatever kind of, they, they, they go off a little bit. But there's also guidance to our anger. If you don't know how to control and manage your anger, that's when you're able to be taken advantage of by the enemy. It says, be angry and sin not. Oftentimes what people do and let's just let's just stick with family, okay? I want to stick with family. Oftentimes what people do in families is they get angry at one another and the first thing they want to do is find the how do I want to say this? Whatever it is, you know how some people they 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 start telling jokes about each other and then one person jokes get really really deep and it and it's really to make that person feel bad. And then the other person comes back and he'll say something that's worse than what the other person said. That's kind of how anger tends to happen with sometimes with families. Whenever one gets mad at one another, one tries to say something that's going to upset the other more. And then they go back and forth and they're throwing haymakers at each other, whether that be verbally and then verbally can turn to physically and then physically can lead to something totally different. You see how things can spiral downhill. If you're angry, one of the things that you can do is pause. One of the things you can do is pause. There's power in a pause. All right. If you just stop for a minute. I just pause. If you just stop for a minute 
Allow yourself to assess the situation. What's going on? Why are we arguing? Why are we upset? Then this is where we see the scripture coming into play, being angry and sinning not. We're thinking about what we're angry about. We're thinking about what's going on in this situation. How can we resolve this? And as husbands and as wives, when you get into an argument or get into a disagreement, the first thing that you don't, the first thing to do is not try to make the other person feel terrible. That's what you don't do. If you get angry at one another, take a moment, pause, take a break, step aside and say, what, where am I? Assess yourself first and then come back together and say, well, what's going on right here? How do we address this? How do we fix this and move forward? Because if not, then we create that, that little crease. That little crease, it becomes a wide open hole for the enemy to come in and now cause division. So y'all went from an, an argument one minute, one day to, to a week later, you're still going at it. You at each other's neck. And next thing you know, a month later, you're divorced. How did we get here? How did we get here? It's because we're not managing. We're not controlling our anger. All right. Now it says, do not let the sun go down on your on your anger. So I want to say, I want to hit. I, I don't want to just read one part of the scripture and, and leave the other part out. So this is talking about uh, learning how to resolve issues within a, a period of time. We have to learn how to resolve issues within a period of time. There are certain issues that we're going to have within family structure whether that be maybe your your child didn't like what you said to them and they want to go off and or whatever that looks like we have to know how to resolve issues within a period of time but when you let things just go on and on and on and on and Every day you're allowing something else to build up. Something else happened. And you're like, okay, I remember what you did yesterday. I remember what you did last week. I still ain't forgot how you was talking about this and how you was doing all of that. We're not learning how to resolve issues in a period of time. We're letting issues on issues on issues continue to pack and, and stack up so that our anger continues to rise and we reach a boiling point where all we want to do is the extreme thing to the individual that we're angry with. That is not God's desire. All right. So these are things when we're talking about the construction of family and being together, loving one another, supporting one another, honoring one another, then this is all a part of, you know, the, the, the things that the enemy wants to destroy. He don't want us to love one another, support one another, be there for one another, encourage each other and say, hey, man, it's OK. You did wrong. Hey, I was wrong. He don't want us to do that. He want pride. He wants to allow pride to set in. When we get angry, if you don't manage your anger, you allow pride to come in. That's a way that the enemy uses um, an opportunity to exploit the, the chance to break up your family, break up your household. Whenever pride comes in and pride is not dealt with, pride wants to feel superior. So whether that's your child, start feeling like he's or she is the adult in the house. Or whether that's husbands and wives going at one another and feeling like I ain't got to apologize. I ain't got to say I'm sorry. Why I got to do it? I ain't do nothing wrong. This is what the enemy wants to do and cause this is this is what how he wants to enter in using these things to cause division in our families to break up our homes. We have to be mindful of this stuff. Let's move right along. 1 Corinthians 7 and 5. And this is for husbands and wives. Uh I'm just going to hit on this a little bit because uh, sex is a it's a it's a major part is a big part in marriage relationships and things like that. All right. I want to just stick to when I say relationship, I want to just stick to marriage. Um, if you're not married, withhold yourself until marriage. All right. Because that alone is another 
gateway is another entryway for the enemy to come in and exploit you. All right. Now, for his marriages, this particular scripture right here, the reason why I want to go over this in 1 Corinthians 7 and 5, it says, do not deprive one another. Deprive means to deny, um, withhold yourself, um, anything within that, that realm. All right. It says, do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement. By agreement. Let me finish reading the scripture, then we're going to break it down. For a limited time that you may devote yourselves to prayer. But then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So there's a couple of things in here that we have to be mindful of. Number one, um, if we are to deny, if I was to deny my wife, my denying of her has to be in agreement with her. This is something that we've, hey, I'm taking about three days to pray. I'm taking about three, four days. I'm fasting. I'm doing this. You know, I know this may be what you want right now, but let me just, let me take a break. All right. I'm taking a break. I need to focus on this. Once we get done, hey, we can get it in. Go time. All right. That has to be an agreement. That has to be an agreement because there are certain women, there are certain men who have a high sex drive who have a like strong sex drive and they like want it want it but whenever you deny and they're really really in need then there has to be an agreement to why you're denying all right now let's get into the self-control part now when it talks about when it starts going into the self-control it says because let me not paraphrase so it says, but then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So that means that self-control is something that you're supposed to have. It's actually one of the things that we should desire, self-control. You're supposed to have self-control. But if you don't have self-control, right, in this particular phase, when you're denied from, you know, your husband or the, the wife being denied from the husband or the husband being denied from the wife, whenever there's a denying right there and you don't have self-control over your flesh, then the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to, you're going to feel, instead of it being a commitment to denying, it's going to feel like rejection, and what happens is when you feel rejected and you have not came together to understand, hey, we're not doing this for this period of time for this particular reason. If there's not a clear understanding right there, then that denying is going to feel like rejection. And then that rejection turns into something totally different. Now, rejection, whenever people get rejected, they oftentimes try to find alternative ways to feel accepted. Whenever people get rejected, they oftentimes try to find other ways to be accepted. Now, if you don't have self-control, then what happens in this stance is you begin to desire other men or desire other women because you can't control the strong appetite that you have for coming together with your husband or your, with your husband or your wife or just your spouse. We have to be mindful of these things. All right. Because, again, when there's no self-control, Scripture tells us that when there's no self, with the lack of self-control, period, this is not just dealing with sex. The lack of self-control, period, gives Satan access to try to exploit you, to get you to fall into some type of temptation, all right? Wherever you're weak at, a lot of times the weaker areas are the areas that get attacked the most. This is what we got to look at when we read in the scripture. A lot of the weakest, the weaker areas that, that you have in your life is what the enemy will try to attack the most. So you have to be mindful of that. And if you're not mindful of those things, then what tends to happen is we, we just kind of lose focus. That's why I talk about understanding enemy tactics, understanding what the what the devil tries to do and how Satan tries to come in and destroy. That's his whole mission. Steal, kill, destroy, cause depression, make you feel terrible, make you feel like you're not worth anything. And that's all things that's against the will of God. To make you not believe what God said about you, that's 
that's his plan. That's his that's tactic that he use all the time. Protect your families. Husbands, cover your home. Wives, you can cover as well. Make sure that you have structure in your home. The order that God sets for a marriage and a married household is God is the head. Right? It's God, it's the husband, the husband, the head of the wife. Then it's the wife and it's the children. That is the order that God has set for homes. Anytime the man wants to take the woman's role or the woman tries to take the man's role, that's out of order. You're going to always have some type of conflict. And I'm not talking about standard conflict where you just had a disagreement. I'm talking about a whole nother type of conflict where chaos begins to come into play. Why? Because the order that God has doesn't come with chaos. There's structure, there's understanding, and there's a level of peace that comes with that. The enemy wants to disrupt the structure that God has for your household. And if he can change the roles, can change the, the positions of the husband and the wife or the man and the woman and the children and the children feel like they're running the house. And guess what? Your house going to be ran to the ground. Because everybody's out of control. Everybody's out of order. When there is no order in the court, when there is no order in the court, things start going sideways. So that's our time for this episode. There's a lot that I can get into um, in regards to this, and we're going to continue to be talking about spiritual warfare and enemy tactics. Right now, this series is called Enemy Tactics or Goals of Satan. Um, and these are things that I just want you guys to be mindful of. Again, when it comes to family, if you're against your brother, if you're against your sister, and I'm not saying that everything got to be peaches and cream all the time. However, understand the premise, understand the reason for may, why you may have had a disagreement. Understand the reason for why you may you know, not talk to each other or things like that. But don't allow something to be in place that you didn't even talk about. Don't allow some type of situation that happened where you heard somebody else say something or you felt some type of way and you never went to your brother, you never went to your sister, you never talked to your mom, you never talked to your child, you never talked to your dad or whatever it looks like for you. Don't let it be a situation where you never address the person that you had a problem with and you just go for years and never have a relationship or conversation or anything like that with that individual. If that is the case, then you're doing exactly what Satan wants you to do. Stay disconnected from your family. And oftentimes when there are people who are always um, in that place, the only thing they always say is, I don't need nobody anyway. They were not never there for me. Well, I got to call them. They don't call me. It's a two-way street. And you're right. It is a two-way thing. But don't have an issue with your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, anybody, and you don't even address them and say what the issue was. That's not fair. So let's get it right, people of God. Make sure that you're tapping in to the Holy Spirit every single day. Allow God to work through you, move through you, speak to you. Um, whatever it is that you are in need of from God, allow him to do that. Um, Father, I just pray for families right now. I pray for husbands, wives, children, mothers, fathers, um, all of your people around the world, God. I pray that there be unity in the body. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you help us to understand the power of family and coming together and being there for one another, loving one another, serving one another, caring for one another, and just being family. You have taught us what family looks like, God. You have showed us that through scripture. Just help us to take that and apply it to our day-to-day -day life in Jesus' name. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the episode on today. 
Uh, listen, we're dropping every Tuesday right now as we're in season six. Make sure that you tune in every Tuesday, uh, whether you listen to on Apple Podcasts, we're there. If you're on Spotify, we're there. If you're on our YouTube channel, we're there. On our website, we're there. Wherever you are, thank you guys so much for supporting us. Go to our website to learn more about us, www.ghfgd.com. Or you can type in gohardforgoddaily.com. And we would love to connect with you guys in any shape, form, or fashion. We have um, more episodes going to be coming later on this year where we're bringing on guests. And if you want to be a guest on the podcast, please go to the website, Get Inspired, uh, ghfgd.com slash Get Inspired. And that will allow you to fill out that form that you need to be a guest on the podcast. So thank you guys so much again for tuning in. We'll see you guys at the next one. Peace. Peace.